ask him that question. Is that a legit question? Ask him that, that question exactly. And ask him, was Easton right on holding that pair of shoes? <laughs> I'm ask him that. Okay, I'm going to ask him that. I'm going to ask him that. All right, folks. <laughs> we are recording. Hey, welcome back to the podcast this week. Um, as you can tell, I am joined by handsome son number one and handsome son number two Wait, on each side of me. Where's number two at? Where, where's number two? He's right here, darling. He's right too. If you're listening on the podcast app and you're like, oh, I want to see her adorable sons, um, you can go over to the YouTubes and we will have a video up there. Yes, I do have a YouTube channel. Don't I, kids? Yes. yes. All right. So, hey guys, welcome um, to both of my boys. This is Noah and Easton Allwood, who I've asked to join me today because they've been running their own sneaker flipping business for um, how long, guys? We have been running our account since December 2018. Okay. So, um, so that means almost a year and a half. Years. Almost two years. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And um, and it's kind of turned into what started out as just kind of some fun has turned into a legit business. And we were having a discussion, the kids and Jason and I recently, just about how we are in the middle of kids being out of school for the rest of the year. Am I right, boys? Yeah. And, um, and a lot of kids with time on their hands. And we were also talking about how there are a lot of companies that might not be hiring right now, fast food joints and things, because they're closed due to you know shelter at home orders. So um, I've invited the boys to come on the podcast and uh, just talk about their business, how they got started. We're going to talk about some other ideas for kidpreneurs. And um, thanks for being here, guys. Who's your favorite mom? It's a pleasure being here. It is a pleasure being here in my home office. Okay. Um, number one, which of you is the smartest? Me. Just kidding. Which of you is the kindest? Me. Most handsome? Me. <laughs> he's the smartest. Who has a better GPA right now? <laughs> he's just a fast, he's a fast like, answer. Oh, oh, no, right, right now GPA Here we go. 8. Mine's 4.0. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Run it. Run it. Here okay. Here. So this is Noah and Easton. Um, I've birthed them both out of my very body. They are 22 months apart. And since the time they were little kids, I have prayed over them that they would literally be each other's very best friend. And even though they are as different as oil and water, um, they are still so close. And so how did you guys decide to start flipping sneakers? Like, I don't even remember really how it started. What happened? Dad's idea? Yeah, uh, dad's idea. He said, I got some shoes I want to sell. And I said, okay, I'll get them posted. So we started up an account. Well, first off, we went to our Snapchat stories and got some money off that. But after that, we started like our own Instagram page and like had people shout us out and stuff like that. And after that, we just, our page kept growing and growing. It also helps that you have a mother who yeah. on occasion will give KCMO yeah, kicks. On yes, on go, go follow KCMO kicks. So originally you posted things on the Snapchats. Mm -hmm. Uh, isn't it interesting how your dad doesn't have social media, but he wants us all to use social media yeah, to sell yeah. things? So he had a pair of sneakers. So let me just say as a side note, I think both my boys now know, like back in the day when Jason and I got married, and we've been married for 22 years, um, you did this thing, like tag me on Instagram, by the way, if you're listening to this and tell me whether or not you did this, if you've been married for a little while, where you had like, you had your wedding cake and then you had um, the cake for the groom. And so I had a Nike shoe cake for your dad at our wedding. So your dad has always had a shoe addiction. So you guys flipped a couple pairs of sneakers for your dad. And then what happened? Well, I think it's like the first pair that we like agreed on that we both wanted really bad was those white paper maxes. Remember those? Yeah. Yeah. So like that was like the first pair that we actually like wanted for our personal selves. And then. And are you saying paper max? Vapor max. Vapor Nike max. Vapor okay. Maxes. You got to understand. It's them. like an air bubble. It's like multiple air bubbles around the shoe. It's not like a you, fully no. built in shoe. So it's like a. A shoe surface with a bunch okay. of like little air bubbles around the bottom. Okay. And then I watched a bunch of like YouTubers like that also flip sneakers too. And uh -huh. that, that really kind of got me into it. And then the Vapor Maxes brought me and Noah kind of together on like both liking the same thing. Okay, cool. So the way you have your business set up right now is that Easton, you have some responsibilities and Noah, you have some responsibilities. So for somebody who's listening right now who has kids that maybe want to flip sneakers or Easton, you also have an account for vintage clothing. Um, and like we know, uh, my friend Carrie, she's, uh, her son is doing things like um, network marketing for some supplements and things that have helped him keep off the freshman 15. And so, and he has a younger brother. So if somebody's listening right now that has a sibling, would you suggest first of all, that they divvy up responsibilities? Does that help? Yeah, it helps out a lot. Okay. So Noah, what are you responsible for? Um, most of the time I'm responsible for uh, meetups and deals. I uh, drive to where I need to go. 
uh, to meet the people for the shoes, whether that's 10 minutes away, whether it's an hour and a half away. I uh, take the price off gas money too. Like if like it's the guy can't meet me halfway, I'll be like, all right, can you throw 15, 20 bucks, you know, the, for gas? And he's like, yeah, sure, I got you. I can do that. I'm like, okay, perfect. Um, I also charge dropping off packages at the postal office just because like mm-hmm. if someone buys our shoes, we try to get to the post office as fast as we can, you know, so people don't, are not bugging us 24-7 about how, like, when are you guys shipping? Like, mm-hmm. can I get the tracking number? We send it that day if we can. Perfect. Easton, what do you do? I'm like more for the aesthetic type. I'm, uh, I take all the pictures. I do all like the networking type things. I just make sure our account looks pretty, I guess. I w- and I will say this. I don't, you've never taken one of your mother's classes, so you no. don't know what I teach, but you've done a really good job on your Instagram. I know that you're very attentive to the DMs, Noah and Easton. You are very good at your site. If you go look at KCMO Kicks, you hold sneakers up in the same place mm-hmm. for almost every photo with the same filter, the same, yep. like you take pictures at a couple different angles. And so it looks really good. Do you guys use your Instagram stories um, daily? Of course. Not, yeah, not, not daily, but when we get our stock up, we usually try to get as much up there as we can. We try to use our Snapchat stories as much as we can because, you know, Snapchat is like easy way to get a hold of people and people right. like, they always look at stories. So there's nothing better to do right now. Right. So I mean, if they see it, should they like, we'll have someone swipe up and we'll get the deal done. Perfect. So, okay. So somebody's listening right now and they've got a child who's obsessed with Adidas or Nikes or whatever also. Mm-hmm. And um, they're going to want to know like, um, how did you, how do you actually get your shoes? Like, where does your shoe stuff come from? Um, whenever we started out, if I mean, honestly, we started at Ross mm-hmm. outlets Nike and Adidas outlets both. We just found shoes that were on sale that we know we could sell for more. Kids like love high end sneakers like Nike, Adidas, Yeezys, anything like that. Yeah. And then you and can I just can I just tell them a side note because um, you got to remember that the people listening to this, unless they're having their teenage kids listen, which I hope that you're going to do, but they're like middle aged moms, and so I just want to do a middle aged mom joke. The first time you were saying Yeezys, I thought you were just saying Easies. Like it's easy. And then also I didn't know that that's Kanye's brand yeah, until Kanye like what, 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who even knew? Okay. So that's what you did starting out. Easton, where do you get most of your sneakers now? Sneakers now? Uh, well, the, the app that we use usually is Nike sneakers app. Cause there's a Nike app and then the Nike sneakers app. Okay. And it's all luck of the draw really. I mean, we have, you know, six accounts because you know six people yeah, in our family always take right. your phones yeah, and we are oh i know yeah. i know because um so moms shoes drop on occasion so they'll like take my phone and they'll go to the app and they're like waiting in the waiting room waiting in the waiting room waiting in the waiting room boom you got one or no you didn't it's a whole world isn't it the sneaker world mm-hmm. yeah okay and so so you guys have been flipping shoes um tell them because there's going to be some mom right now is like how many shoes can you really sell or like how much money can you actually make? What's the best sale you've made to get today? Um, Easton's probably going to get mad at me, but um, (laughs) I got lucky to have my personal phone account, buy a pair of shoes for the Travis Scott ones for $170, which is a retail price. And we ended up flipping the shoes for $850. Now, if we held that pair, (laughs) which I told him to hold that pair for about Two or three more months. No, how much could we have made? Probably close to twelve hundred dollars. Are you serious? Right now, the who, okay. So who pays twelve hundred dollars for shoes? Other guys? resellers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so or we could even sell the apps like StockX. Like if you have brand new shoes or you even use shoes, you can use Goat and they like someone like make an offer. You accept the offer and you send the shoes to StockX and you get the money right to your pocket. Yeah. Okay, so that was like the best deal you've ever made. So you made almost seven hundred dollars off one pair of shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, have you lost your butt on shoes? No, not no. We haven't had any huge losses. We ha- I don't think we've actually had any really. I yeah, mean, we always manage to make right. good profit. Let's talk about what happened last week. Without we don't have to drop any names, to anybody. But you got scammed last week, right? Yeah, yeah, we did get scammed. Okay, one. So we got scammed to... twice. Actually, we got scammed yeah. twice. So yeah. I decided that I saw a story of some guy selling a pair of zebra Yeezys for one hundred twenty dollars, which is an absolute steal based on the market. Because right you now. could flip them for how much? Probably two forty. Okay. Ish. And so I was like, okay, perfect. I'll buy them. Uh, so I copped them. Well, I thought I copped them. And copped them is, is what bottom. young people say for bottom. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I asked the dude for the tracking number and his account blocked me. So I decided to do some research and I found out his mom and I found out his address and his phone number, all stuff like that. So I decided to take it to my own desire to text his mother and I sent his 
personal account and screenshots of me texting his mom on how he scammed me and that if I didn't get my money back, there would be a police uh, report filed. And he's like, perfect, I'll send the money back. You don't text my mom. So I, he's like, delete the messages from me, mom, from you to my mom. I was like, no, your mom needs to know that you're a scammer and that you're just trying to have kids pay for you to not send your shoes out. We don't do that in the sneaker business. That's right. We don't do that in the sneaker business. Good job, son. So that one, you got your money back. Yep. And then what happened last week? Uh, bought a pair of uh, Air Jordan 1s uh, for 170 And we could have flipped that pair for around 220 210 So we're making our money back and some profit. And mm -hmm. uh, and then he, he kept on, he like... It was kind of complicated. Yeah, it was, it was complicated. So I asked him for the shipping label because he was shipping the next day. And then uh, he blocked me and then blocked a bunch of other resellers that has bought from him that mm -hmm. day too. Some guy spent $600, like he paid the other guy $600. And so that guy lost $600. We, only, we were only out 170, so it wasn't that bad. But, uh, and then he just completely blocked me. So I had to call my bank because we couldn't find anything like his. Right. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> I know you guys the are both hardest guy to find. Yeah. He kind of went dark to yeah. me. Yeah. But I was really proud of you guys for your detective skills. And so, um, do you guys fight ever in your business? Not usually. Yeah. Not no. usually. Sometimes like I've done a bad trade once and Ethan didn't, wasn't very happy with me, but, and then we always know we're going to get our money back. Cause like we always manage to get our money back. We just got to yeah. find, we just got to wait for the right seller and wait for the right buyer. Yeah. And so, and you guys have like your own bank account. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just open that up. Mm -hmm. You've got your own like debit cards with that. Yep. And our business and cards are on the way. The business cards are on the way. You've got your business license. Like yep. you've got this as a legit business right now. Mm -hmm. And so how are you guys getting your followers on Instagram? Um, honestly, the reason we got our followers to start out is, a. Uh, shouting us out on Snapchat, like we'd post on our story, like, hey, go follow us, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But recently, we were just getting followers out of the random, like, people will check other resellers and just start following right. who it is. Uh, we've grown a lot in the past month, I'd say. Like, we went from 1.3K, I think, in the past two months to sitting at 2.2 thousand followers, which is absolutely insane. Stop. Give me a high five. High five. I'm so proud. I'm like a proud mama right now. Yeah. Um, but one thing I've noticed that especially you do really well, no, at least I think it's you, is you do a shout out to like other resellers yep. and say it was really great to do business with XYZ and then they turn around and shout you back out, right? Yeah, because you always and need so to give props to other resellers. I mean, how your business grows. I mean, if you prop to another business, they'll be like, perfect, I'll prop to another business. Like they'll all give, give you steals. Like if mm -hmm. you're like good business to another reseller, he'll be like giving you a good deal and stuff like that. It always comes around in the end because, you know, we can make more money off yeah. that steal, which is a lot easier than selling for hard to sell. Okay. So um, I mentioned my friend Carrie, whose son is like helping her in her network marketing with like supplements and stuff. And he's a freshman in college. Um, this podcast is actually um, completely edited by um, Zeke. Uh, one of the girls who works for me, it's her son, and he does all of the producing. He's totally self-taught. Um, he does all the podcast editing, and he's also 19 years old. Um, I know Nell's son, Eli, also like films and edit videos and makes things for people's Instagram. And we have a friend, um, you do Easton, who was just on the Dave Ramsey show. Um, give a shout out to your buddy right now. Mason Gates. Mason Gates was just on Dave Ramsey's yeah. show. He's on it again today. Yeah. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. I haven't even been on Dave's show. He was called in. Oh, okay. I called in one time, but that was before Dave's show was live. And so he has a lawn mowing business. Now, in the wintertime, you guys, um, yeah. you both run a crew for snow shoveling and snow blowing, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and Noah, you have worked um, at a pizza place. You I'm have also. Two pizza places. Yep. You have also delivered pizzas. Yep. So tell me, like, um, for any teenagers that's listening, what I'm hoping is that some of the moms who are listening right now are going to make their kids listen to it. Um, tell like, what are some of the advantages of starting your own business of like flipping shoes over maybe like working at pizza hut or a pizza place here in town? I would say a pizza place. If you want to work at a pizza place, the best thing you can do is delivery drive. Hey man, brother. It's, um, absolutely insane amounts of money. Like you get great With money, tips. great tips. Mm -hmm. You, it's just insane amount of money. I think the worst weekend, I, first weekend I worked for pizza hut delivery, I think I made a total of. 200 and something dollars in tips in just two days and cash, absolutely yeah. insane. Yep. but um the good thing about working for shoes though is like you can work from home you know you can sit in your bed mm -hmm. and still make shoe deals like you can just text the guy like hey can i buy these blah blah blah, blah. buy them get them clean them up some more money and boom you get cash right in your hand yeah and so at this point would it be hard for you to go work at 
say a fast food restaurant i mean it would be hard for you both to do that because it's no we, we have a passion for shoes and it'd be yeah. so hard to watch our business just die down just because we're working at somewhere where we're miserable and that you don't think you good. could you don't think you could do both no. no i've tried doing both like i mean like i've always like I'm, my motivation is to like get more money you know like i think it's everyone's motivation in life but like knowing that you have two jobs i like, i like shoes more yeah, like I know working you do. for working for a pizza place where you have a manager. Do you like, like working that. for yourself? Yeah, like you have no one to boss you around, anything like that. Like you're your own two bosses. Yep. Did um, I'm hoping that your parents maybe inspired you just slightly in some of that thinking? Go ahead, Easton. Is that a yes, man? Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so we were talking, um, so let's say there's a mom listening right now and her kids are not interested in sneakers and they're not interested in like editing podcasts and things. I was asking you guys like some of the entrepreneurs that you see um, at school because Noah, like you're getting ready to be a freshman in college. Um, Easton's getting ready to be a junior if school ever starts back up on this side of heaven. Please, Lord God, make it happen. And so um, what are some of the businesses though? I know you guys said you you see kids at school like flipping candy. Yeah. They're, like, like tell me some they of the good money doing what um so they buy their candy from like sam's club or costco's yeah, sam's club. and they sure. get the big boxes yeah so it's like 14 bucks maybe like 40 chocolate bars right. and that's mm -hmm. the chocolate bar for like 150 a piece and it's like they've spent 12 bucks on it but they're about to make 40 right like 90 dollars. that's right. like yeah. 80 bucks profit that's, that's three insane. tanks of gas isn't yeah. it kiddo yeah, it's insane okay and then you also said baseball cards yeah There's... baseball cards a big one um yeah, i saw i started seeing like people with other like another business with shoes like people started customizing shoes oh yeah like, that's a one. yeah keegan Cooley, like, they will, like they, they will pay to like have their shoes painted on and designed for yeah. them and it looks really, really yeah, it looks yeah. Really sick. they're painting on sneakers yeah, yeah. it's like custom custom okay shoes. and then um easton you have a clothes account i know you yeah. don't do a ton on the clothes account but no, no. do you see other kids your age like flipping vintage clothing and stuff not really vintage but like old old clothes they don't wear they, okay. Instead of like just taking them to like the thrift store or anything like that, we'll just see who wants it on their Snapchat right. story or their. So, what, yeah. how do you make more money doing that, Easton? Because I've seen you do this. Both of you have seen you do this. We have a couple of places that we live close here in Kansas City that'll buy your guys's old clothes. Oh, so, yeah. like you're you've got that three stripe life T shirt on right now, yeah. Easton. Uh, Noah, Who's you have a Royals T shirt. A Royals T shirt, but still, they buy clothes like that. And so, which one makes more money when you try to flip it on your Snapchat or when you take it into a store? Well, it really just depends on the item and how much you bought it for. Like when I, I go thrifting, you know, usually before the coronavirus. <laughs> before thing. Corona. Yeah. And uh, in the, one of my best finds was this vintage Nike crew t-shirt or this sweater. And uh -huh. uh, I bought it for like 15 bucks and, you know, I could sell that right now for like 30 to 40 bucks. Right. Okay. And so that's, that's really, uh, but like if I wanted to sell like this t-shirt, mm -hmm. I probably couldn't sell for as like that great good as a profit margin right yeah. so okay for someone listening right now if they were gonna try to figure out like if their kiddos listening and they're like gosh what could I do for a job what would you suggest they first need to figure out what if if you want to get involved in shoes honestly I'd say your best bet was posting shoes you don't wear anymore like mm -hmm. you know any everyone needs shoes someone's gonna buy something like right. in the end of the day everyone needs something to wear on their feet um just all a very good on your point price. my smart son good um, job if you throw a good price we I mean, know you put that money back in your pocket you know, save that money up, invest in a shoe. Like the best shoe you can invest in are Jordans and Yeezys. Everyone has a high demand for those shoes. If you can buy used, perfect. Buy off goat, find a steal, you know, which is a good deal in mm -hmm. our sneaker language. Clean them up, make them look good, post them for more money on your Snapchat or something like that, your Instagram story, and boom, you'll have a deal. And that brings me another thing. Easton, you're in charge of all the cleanup. Mm -hmm. You are, um, you have a knack for getting shoes to look brand yeah. new. Yeah. Any secrets you want to give away or not really? I mean, shout, give a shout out to Crep Protect. Yeah, shout out to Crep Protect. And with Cred the, Protect? Yeah, Crep Protect. business Crep thing. C-R-E-P. Is this run by another teenager? No. No. Okay. It's like a worldwide shoe cleaning. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And that's what you, and so did you basically just follow other sneaker people to see like what they were using to clean stuff? Is that how you did it? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm really proud of you guys. For real, I'm really proud of you. You have a legit business going. Your dad and I are not on your tails for you guys to start a business because you have a business or not to get a job because you have a job. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm really, really proud of you. And I hope that this will be really encouraging um, for some other teenagers. Okay, so last question, most important question of the day. Which one of you is the favorite child? 
definitely not the one that just walked in. <laughs> that would be that would be Ava. We are actually recording the video right now, Ava. We will be right out. <laughs> welcome to welcome to the house with coronavirus friends. Which one's favorite child? I'm sorry. Definitely me. <laughs> definitely. Ava. All right, friends. Thank you so I'm much. A white T-shirt right now. My favorite child. Why? Why can't you wear a white T-shirt? Because he's not the favorite child. You have hair right now. You're the favorite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, and okay, the ro the wheels have fallen off the bus. All right, so go find the boys at KCMO Kicks, and we appreciate you listening to the podcast. I hope that this is encouraging for your teenager. Wow, there's some chaos going on in the background. We're so blessed to have you here, though. Thank you guys for listening. Bye bye.